Brexit has been high on the agenda on the first of a two-day summit in Brussels. Several EU leaders acknowledge that little progress has been made in post-Brexit trade talks, despite today being UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson's self-imposed deadline to reach an agreement. The bloc's leaders are looking to strike a deal by the end of the month, but the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said deep divisions remain over two key issues. We want a good deal, but not at any cost. Um, a lot of good work has been done, but two critical issues are still open. Um, the one is the issue of the question of the fisheries, and this is a crucial question for thousands of fishermen and fisherwomen. And the second topic is the question of a level playing field, which is crucial, uh, a question of fairness for our companies and businesses in the European Union. Well, for more on this, let's go over to Brussels now, where we can speak to our political editor, Darren McCaffrey. Uh, Darren, we were trying to do some housekeeping and get some other clips uh, to cut for, from EU leaders arriving there. And they all seem to be united, quoting what Ursula von der Leyen said there about the level playing field and as well as overfishing. Is it, has it seemed that they're united or is that just the front? I think in many ways uh, they are pretty united, but to a degree, particularly on the issue of fishing, it is somewhat of a front because uh, we know that the EU at some stages essentially, if it wants to get a deal, going to have to compromise on this issue of fishing. Now, that is difficult for some member states, notably uh, Ireland and France, uh, given the fact that they are the countries that have most access to Britain's uh, territorial waters and are allowed uh, to fish. And so what is happening at the moment, Tokes, is essentially uh, they're presenting this united front, talking about how they're going to defend their fishermen and fisherwomen, as we heard there from Ursula von der Leyen. But in the end, they realise in a couple of weeks' time, they're probably going to have to give some ground. What they don't want is for those fractures to appear too early. They want to concede at the last possible moment. And that is why you're seeing them seemingly all singing from the same him sheets in many regards. Uh, but being no doubt, you know, there are still those sticking points. Uh, these negotiations are going to have to carry on for many weeks to come. And as you've rightly pointed out, this was meant to be the summit uh, that decided whether it was going to be deal or no deal. In many ways, it's been the Brexit summit that wasn't. Darren, uh, another thing I wanted to ask you about was, you know, there's been lots of bluster and threats over the past few years. Um, it seemed clear, though, that both sides want a deal. So what grounds do they have to compromise on? Well, essentially, you're right in pointing out that most sides do want to get a deal. They've said it publicly time and time again, but that's very different from actually achieving a deal because when you look at the detail, and you know, to use another cliche, the devil is always in the detail, uh, both sides are pretty far apart on certain issues, and it's not just fishing. It is in this idea of the level playing field and state aid that Britain essentially has to stick by the rules and regulations uh, that are currently in place within the European Union so that they cannot undercut standards or become too competitive. And again, that's difficult for Britain. Uh, the British would argue that one of the points of Brexit is that they could go their own way, that they could decide to prioritise certain industries over another. But I think in the end, if there is to be a deal, what will weigh heavily potentially is the economic damage that could be caused to both sides if there isn't one, Tokes. You know, most countries are now looking at a pretty deep recession that they weren't earlier on this year. And that will weigh heavily as they go into these final weeks of negotiations. Essentially, can the European Union and Britain afford not to have a deal? Much more to be said, no doubt, there in Brussels. For now, our political editor, Darren McCaffrey, thank you.